school system's asbestos scandal. Well, now they're going face to face with representatives of the chancellor's office, demanding answers about the asbestos testing fiasco. Celeste Ford is live in Brooklyn, where both sides are meeting. Celeste. Tim, the good news this morning is that the city says preliminary test results show there is no asbestos contamination in those schools already tested. The bad news is this inspection process is moving slower than expected. Meantime, the Board of Education is meeting with parents at this hour. It's a meeting that has turned into a screaming match as parents boil over with anger. The interim chancellor, Harvey Garner, was thrust into the spotlight this morning trying to convince parent groups that the Board of Education is doing all it can to protect their children from cancer-causing asbestos. There is an overwhelming sense of distrust. One of the things that's consistent, whether it's picking a new chancellor or something like this, is that uh, they don't inform parents until there's a crisis and they absolutely have to. And they're calling for some form of third-party monitoring. I think that we need a cover letter from the EPA or agency of that sort, independent, to say that our schools are safe to go into. Last week, investigators revealed that the school asbestos program completed in 1989 is seriously flawed, forcing the city to reinspect all its schools. Over the weekend, 21 of the most seriously damaged schools were inspected, roughly half the number scheduled. Complete test results are due out midweek. Meantime, 2,000 damaged spots have been covered. Last night, the city's oversight committee explained the delay, saying the inspection process requires a more thorough examination than first expected. Before we certify a school as being uh, completely asbestos uh, free of friable asbestos, we want to be sure that all locations have been visibly tested. And so we're going to wait another day or so before we give out specific results. And this morning, at least one board member says the school construction authority should take control of the entire asbestos program. Remove it from the board of ed to the school construction authority. That's one of the reasons why the school construction authority was established by the legislature. Now the investigation is looking at the board of education's role in awarding the asbestos contract to the group EnviroSafe. Privately, investigators say they had to release their findings last week because of the public safety threat, but this disclosure hurt them because it gives potential suspects time to destroy evidence. And we're live in downtown Brooklyn. I'm Celeste Ford, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Dangerous police duty this morning as narcotics officers found themselves in a shootout in a Washington Heights building. One officer was hit in the leg, though he is in good condition. Police say Sergeant James Gilday was shot as he and fellow officers were executing search warrants trying to bust an alleged cocaine operation. Commissioner Raymond Kelly described what happened. The team consisting of one lieutenant, uh, Sergeant Gilday, and nine uh, detectives entered the uh, apartment. And as they opened the front door of the apartment, shots rang out from a side door, fired through the door, striking Sergeant Gilday in the uh, right thigh. Officers returned the uh, fire. The Washington Heights search was part of a multi-state narcotics operation. Four people were arrested at the building. A brazen jewel heist in Morris County. Six men robbed two jewel dealers when they arrived home from an antique show Sunday night. Well, the, the robbers grabbed three cases, but as they tried to escape, one of the victims pulled his gun and fired. The robbers dropped one of the cases, and it turned out to be the big one. It held about $400,000 worth of jewels. The two cases the robbers got away with held about $50,000 in jewelry and paperwork. A surrogate mother says that she is being robbed of her child. The custody fight for a baby boy continues on Long Island. That surrogate mother and her attorney this time are beginning to present their side of this very emotional battle. Doug Johnson is live at family court in Central Islip with more. Doug. Tim, this suburban courthouse is the scene of a truly extraordinary custody battle. It involves a married woman who first of all agreed to have artificial insemination to become a surrogate mother, then agreed to have sex with the potential father, became pregnant, then decided she wanted to keep the child, though it meant giving up the $25,000 surrogate fee. 14, 1992, have you seen? The lawyer for Susan Chamberlain began presenting her side of the case this morning. Chamberlain had contracted to be a surrogate mother for Joseph and Jean Kaplan. She had sex with Joseph Kaplan, gave birth to a little boy, and now is fighting to keep the child. 
This morning, a woman who was a foster mother to Susan Chamberlain when Susan was 15 years old said that Chamberlain was a good mother to her own children. A psychologist who had treated the Kaplans was asked if they had ever discussed surrogacy with him. Was there any discussion about a surrogacy or a, uh, the possibility of another person having their child? Um, yes. Uh, Mrs. Kaplan told me uh, the story in two occasions. Okay. Did you discuss that with Mr. Kaplan? No. The psychologist said the uh, Kaplans just, uh, had discussed many things with him, okay. that on one occasion, Mrs. Kaplan had talked about suicide. Please tell us what, if anything, Mrs. Kaplan said about uh, the potential of hurting herself, or threatening to hurt herself. Um, Mrs. Kaplan told me that she said that she might commit suicide, but she discarded that as a manipulation. This case will be on only one more day this week, and the rest of this week will be taken up, more or less, we're told, with character witnesses for Susan Chamberlain. Then next week, Susan Chamberlain herself is scheduled to take the stand to give her side in this extraordinary case. We're live in Central Islip, Doug Johnson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. A court ruling in New Jersey in a first ever for that state, a lesbian was allowed to adopt her partner's child. Superior Court Judge Philip Friedman ruled that the adoption was in the best interest of the child. Judge Friedman's decision assures in New Jersey that lesbian and gays and their families can be legally recognized. Lovesickness, not drugs, drove New York's former Chief Judge Saul Wachler off the deep end. That's the conclusion of the psychiatrist hired by federal prosecutors, according to published reports. Wachler was convicted of threatening his ex-lover Joy Silverman's daughter after Silverman broke off their affair. The psychiatrist's finding disputes Wachler's claim that he acted irrationally because he was taking prescription drugs. Wachler will be sentenced next month. Pope John Paul II, carrying a message of family values and reconciliation, is on the first leg of his pilgrimage to the peaks, speaking to youth groups and celebrating an open-air mass on the island of Jamaica today. That after his arrival there yesterday, the Pope is asking the people of Jamaica to put aside the memory of 500 years of slavery on the island. Well, Denver is preparing for the arrival of the Pope on Thursday, where he will address participants in World Youth Day. From Los Angeles and many other towns and cities across the country, thousands of young people are heading for the Mile High Country. Lucy Yang is at Newark Airport, where one group from our area is on its way to see the Pope. Lucy? That's right, Tim. We are at the Continental Terminal, where it is up, up, and away, on their way to Denver and the chance of a lifetime to see Pope John Paul II. With their bags in hand and spirits high, scores of teenagers arrived at the airport today thrilled about their destination, Denver, and the chance to meet the Pope. Many brought with them crosses, medallions, icons for the leader of their faith to bless. It's called the Miraculous Medal, and um, it was given in a vision to a saint, and um, now it's all over the world. Others took along souvenirs of what America stands for to trade for souvenirs from teenagers of other countries. This Catholic celebration is expected to be quite international. It's a common tradition that we trade with everything, like they love um, hoping to get buttons from all over the world. Fun times and new friends are well anticipated for this trip, but students here are also hoping for a meaningful spiritual experience. I think that this experience will definitely strengthen the faith of myself and all of my friends. And I think it will bring us closer to God. And I think that we can come back into our schools and help bring the spirit of Jesus into our schools so that it may live in our lives and every day. I think it'll be a great experience for all of us. And I think it'll like get us ready for what there is to come in life. Seeing the Pope and be united in one thing, that's the greatest. The 73-year-old Pontiff has always had a special heart for children and young adults. No doubt he will encourage the audience in Denver to stand firm against peer pressure and to hold fast to the church's teachings, especially on moral issues. No one knows better than the Pope that it is the young people who hold the future to the church. We're live at Newark International Airport, Lucy Yang, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And Eyewitness News will, of course, have comprehensive coverage of the Pope's trip to Denver. Beginning tomorrow, Greg Hurst will have live reports from the scene of the Pope's pilgrimage to the peaks. Hundreds of thousands of Saturns will make a trip back to the dealer. Up next on Eyewitness News, why the company is forced to recall every car it has made before April of this year. 
Plus, we told you her story yesterday. A little girl in Sarajevo in desperate need of medical help. We'll tell you now about her life-saving journey. And a bit later, what children think about other kids who suck their thumbs. You'll want to hear the answers as we make a house call with Dr. Bob Lanier. This is a story like no other that you will ever hear. Trudy Chase, I am saying, we are saying, has 92 personalities. I'm hearing this voice, just calling. When did you realize you were not alone? The number was grow, 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 growing. You are normal within your frame of reference. The damage done by child abuse. The real Trudy Chase on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Today at four, right here on Channel 7. spring natural spring water only comes from one source in the wilderness of Maine. So does the following offer. Stay tuned. There's a clean, natural place. A special place deep in the woods of Maine. The source of Poland Spring natural spring water. Crisp and refreshing, it's one of nature's treasures. And it remains unspoiled because thousands of guards protect it. Here's the special offer. Call 1-800-759-9389 and get Poland Spring delivered to your home or office. Phone now and receive two six-gallon bottles and one month's cooler rental free. Enjoy delicious Poland Spring natural spring water delivered right to your door. Saturn is recalling over 300,000 cars. Saturn is recalling every car built before this past April 15th. Apparently, there's a wire that can short circuit and cause the Saturn engine to catch fire. At least 34 cars have caught fire, although Saturn says no one's been injured in those accidents. The recall applies to all 1991 and 92 Saturns. That's all of them. And all 1993 models built before April 15th. An ABC News Washington Post poll shows that many Americans would like to recall President Clinton's budget plan, but like it or not, the president is signing it into law today. It's a very busy morning for the president. A few moments ago, he presented his new ambassador to Canada, former Governor Jim Blanchard of Michigan. And within the next few minutes, the president will sign that budget bill that just narrowly squeaked through Congress last week. But the ABC News Washington Post poll shows only 43% of Americans approve of the budget plan. 48% disapprove, and 45% think the plan will help the economy, 48% think it will actually hurt the economy. President Clinton's choice for the Supreme Court, New York native Ruth Bader Ginsburg, officially becomes Justice Ginsburg today in Washington. The, fe the Brooklyn-born federal judge will be sworn in as the 107th Justice on the Supreme Court. She also becomes the second woman appointed to the nation's highest court. A man threatening to pour acid on passengers hijacked an Air China plane from China to Taiwan today, then surrendered. The 30-year-old said that he would rather die in a free country than live under communism in China. No one on board was hurt. This is the third hijacking from China to Taiwan since April. In Taiwan, hijacking is punishable by the death penalty. It was a life-saving flight that brought a little five-year-old girl out of war-torn Bosnia. Eleven days ago, the little girl named Irma was seriously wounded by mortar fire, and the only hope for her survival was through the special medical airlift. British rescuers agreed to fly Irma out of Bosnia to get the proper medical treatment she was unable to get in the Bosnian hospital's inadequate facilities. She was first airlifted to Italy, then on to London. Her father and sister were with her. Irma was rushed into surgery at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital for sick children for the three-hour operation doctors hope will save her life. We feel the most serious problems at present are infection, possibly meningitis. She may also have recurrent abdominal problems. 
the shrapnel uh, penetrated her spinal column and then went into her um, abdominal cavity and uh, she's had some what I think is probably definitive surgery on her on her abdomen and the, that at the moment is not giving cause for concern. Appearing on Good Morning America, Dr. Anthony McDermott, who accompanied Irma on her flight, revealed doctors have also relieved pressure on her brain. At the moment, prognosis must be guarded, but um, she's still with us after 10 days, and that's a good sign. Five-year-old Irma, though, is one of the lucky ones. Three children each day die in the ongoing battle in Bosnia. But many others, young and old, can only wait for help from the outside while the United Nations and other countries discuss their fate. So we desperately need to, to get the rest of these people out and then to work on the hundreds of other wounded people in the city who could be, uh, be saved by treatment abroad. 41 wounded people have been approved by the UN to leave, but there are no hospitals to take them. Of the countries taking injured civilians, the U.S. has so far helped 19. When we continue with Eyewitness News, we'll find out about a change in the weather. Bill Evans will be along. He says we've got a little moisture. The exclusive Accuator of the Forecast is next. On the next live, it's a laugh a minute with some of the biggest stars in comedy. Home Improvement's Tim Allen. Very handsome, Tim. Very uh, distinguished. A little, little makeover next day. Yeah. <laughs> the wacky Howie Mandel. Ever since I was a little boy, I wanted to be a rock head. <laughs> Plus, Carol Lee, Joe Piscopo, and Rita Rudner. You'll laugh till you cry on the next live. Tomorrow at 9. Right here on Channel 7. My husband's a dentist. He tells people to use a mixture of baking soda and peroxide for their teeth and gums. This is Mentadent, the only toothpaste with baking soda and peroxide. You can feel it working. The tingling oxygen bubbles. Mentadent, it's a powerful toothpaste. Living Well Lady Fitness Centers, only for women. Energizing workouts that encourage results. Great value, low prices, $10 a month. Great value, low prices, $10 a month. <sighs> Living Well Lady Fitness Centers. Call now, 1-800-LIVE-WELL, L-I-V-W-E-L-L. -L. Crisp and clean Poland Spring natural spring water only pitcher was named World Series MVP. Make time to take the Jeopardy Challenge. Tonight at 7, here on Channel 7. Bill Evans here now. So we got a little rain coming our way. Look like it outside. Yes, a few isolated thunder showers are possible tomorrow afternoon. There are some clouds around the area. We've got a lot of moisture that's around. We it's kind still of need it. typical August dog days, actually. And we are in very much need of rain. We're six inches short of the normal rainfall for this time of the year. However, on the east side, there are lots of people enjoying that sunshine. Right around the Metropolitan Museum of Art. A beautiful place with lots of paintings. And it has been a nice day on the Upper East Side, as well as all throughout the Tri-State area, as a matter of fact. That, I believe that was the financial section of the paper she was reading, was it? Probably checking out that ABC stock. It's 78 degrees right now. Humidity is at 60%. The barometer has been at 30.31 and is holding steady. The winds continue to really move on up out of the southwest at about 6 miles per hour. Predominantly, the wind has been out of the south, and that is why we've had that low cloud deck across the area over the last several hours, and that is also why we've got a lot of moisture moving in. But this hour, the winds have crept around to the southwest. Predominantly, they'll be out of the southeast all day long. The trace of rain is from this time yesterday when we got that light sprinkle in Manhattan. All right, look at satellite pictures over the last 24 hours here in the northeast. An area of cloudiness with an upper-level disturbance is working its way now across the Ohio Valley. There it is, just south of Chicago, right across Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. It's a big upper-level trough that that is a part of, and it's also creating a lot of clouds that are moving our way today. And mostly all of these in the state now are just high, thin clouds. There has been a little band of rain west of Binghamton, but just a very light area of rain. The real bulk of the rain is in these real white clouds with the higher tops that are around 30,000 feet. Those are producing some pretty good thunderstorms in the Ohio Valley. But this upper-level disturbance altogether will keep moving eastward and arrives here tomorrow and may increase our chances of getting a scattered shower or a thunderstorm. We have no rain anywhere in and around the city. So the satellite pictures from across the rest of the country are going to show that area of cloud and it's producing some pretty good thunderstorms as it's just kind of racing southeastward. Those clouds will go away, but more thunderstorms will reform with that upper level disturbance as that little upper level pool continues moving eastward. Across the Rockies is the only other spot where we're getting some scattered showers from the monsoonal flow off the Pacific that works its way into the mountains, and that's what creates those scattered thunderstorms that they get in the afternoon. More of those will be building up across the, lock, uh, the Rockies on the leeward side of those mountains. Here are the thunderstorms that I was telling you about across St. Louis and in the Ohio Valley. Those thunderstorms are rather heavy and are still moving southeastward. And that's some drenching rain here, three and four inches of rain. And these thunderstorms 
that's right in the flood zone there, so that's not going to help matters. However, when we look at our forecast for this afternoon, 85 will be the high, it'll be sunny and warm. We'll get some moisture coming up out of the south. There's the low that I was talking about. It'll make its way down to the surface with a warm front, and thunderstorms will be ahead of it by 6 o'clock this evening. But we'll see a nice night tonight. Then tomorrow, the low makes its advance on the city. And in the afternoon, probably about 3 or 4 o'clock, we'll get some late scattered thunderstorms in and around this area of disturbance as it keeps moving eastward. However, the rest of the country, from the Gulf Coast down to the, up to the Great Lakes, is going to see some great weather. Humid this afternoon, 85 will be the high. Cooler near the coast, it'll just be wonderful, about 80 there. Warm and sticky tonight with a low of 70. And then tomorrow, sunny, warm, humid, and those afternoon thunder boomers race in then. They'll hang around Thursday, too, some afternoon thunderstorms. Then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on your AccuWeather five-day outlook, we'll have the heat returning. After all, it is the dog, dog days. Me. Ow, ow, ow. That's the dog. Impressive, Bill. Parents must weather many storms when they're raising children, and one of them is trying to break your child of thumb sucking. It can certainly turn into an embarrassing habit, and studies show it definitely affects your child's image. More now from Dr. Bob Lanier. You intend to hold on to it's a trademark of Linus thumb sucking, and according to pediatric researchers, there's some justification for concern by parents. Research done in the Journal of Pediatrics shows that thumb sucking may reduce social acceptance, which is an important contributor to social development. The research was sort of innovative. They showed a class of first graders two slides on two occasions. Now, the first time it was a thumb sucking boy and a non thumb sucking girl. The second week, they reversed it and had the girl thumb sucking and the boy not. Then they asked the kids 10 questions about the kids in the photo Are they happy? How smart are they? Are they desirable as a friend? The results from this and other studies prove the obvious. Kids view thumb sucking as a negative habit. The problem is that if a first grader is still doing it in school, it's likely to be more of a symptom of some significant psychological problem. Kids pick that up. I'm Dr. Bob Lanier. Some child news for two big Hollywood stars. Coming up next on Eyewitness News, Sean Penn and his girlfriend have their hands full. We'll tell you about the new addition to their family. And Michelle Pfeiffer has a mouthful about raising a child on her own. What she has to say, next on Eyewitness News. The youth of America gather in Denver, and Pope John Paul II journeys to the city to share his message of faith. Eyewitness News anchor Greg Hurst is there with live reports on the people and the prayers as hundreds of thousands of the faithful come together to hear their Holy Father. Join us for full coverage as Pope John Paul II makes this pilgrimage of hope a promise, this pilgrimage to the peaks, starting Wednesday on Eyewitness News, right here on Channel 7. Roach baits! Some roach baits are obvious, but new Raid Roach baits don't look like baits, so you can put them anywhere. And Raid baits kill back in the nest. That was a roach bait! Raid kills bugs dead. <laughs> Smells good! Raid Ant and Roach has a new country fresh scent, so it's easier on you, tough as ever on roaches. I know. Who sent flowers? New country fresh Raid kills bugs dead. People that used Murphy oil soap for years are finding out about Pledge Household Cleaner. You walk in, it just smells clean. It smells fresh. The Pledge Household Cleaner just, it does a nice, fast, easy job. It makes the wood look beautiful. It's been good to my wood. It's been good to my floor. I've used it on wood. I've used it on ceramic tile, on the counters, on the cabinets. It's just a smooth, clean feeling. Pledge Household Cleaner gently cleans wood and other household surfaces beautifully. From S.C. E. Johnson Wax. It's going to be Pledge. Glad to see you're resting up, because this summer, you're going to be doing a whole lot of traveling. Summer's the time for AT&T World on Sale, with an extra 40% off the usual Reach Out World savings during special hours every Saturday and Sunday through August. There's a world full of people waiting to hear from you. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now. International savings for the way you call. Just another part of the iPlan. Billy Joel's new album tops our people in the news today. River of Dreams is Joel's first album in four years, and he says it was hard to compose. He calls it autobiographical and says the album starts on an angry tone because someone close to him betrayed him, and he began doubting his own judgment. Actor Sean Penn is a proud father again. Penn's significant other, Robin Wright, gave birth to a boy last Friday in Los Angeles. Hopper Jack Penn 
is the couple's second child. And as for being a parent, actress Michelle Pfeiffer is telling Vanity Fair that adopting a child was the best thing she's ever done. She says she opted against having a baby herself because, quote, she didn't want to get stuck with some guy who's going to drive me nuts. And here are some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock. A horrifying find at one adult home, and police say that it is just the latest in a series of serious problems there. Also, more than 40 million Americans suffer from mild hypertension or slightly elevated blood pressure. We'll show you the best ways to treat it. Dr. Jay Adlersberg will explain. And a big musical off-Broadway, Annie is back in Annie Warbucks. Joel Siegel tells us if we'll sing its praises. All this and a good deal more at 5 o'clock on Eyewitness News. And that's the news for now. I'm Edie Tarbox. And I'm Tim Fleischer. For Bill Evans and all of us here at Eyewitness News, go out and make it a good day. And join us again for Eyewitness News at 5, 6, and 11. We'll look for you here tomorrow at noon. Bye-bye.